you guys remember when we're using implicit, basically what we're going to do is take um, d over dx on both sides, and then we're going to solve for dy dx. So before I even, um, where is my example in here? So before what I can do is, before I even get to that point, I can break this apart because does this look like fun taking the derivative of this? But what we can do is take the ln of both sides. If you guys remember the one-to-one -one property, if you have a, an equation, if you guys remember I gave you guys ln of x equals ln of y, that means x equals y. That was one of your properties that I gave you. So one thing that we can do to kind of circumvent some problems or make them a little bit simpler is if x is equal to y, or you know, whatever, 5 is equal to x, if you take the ln of both sides, you're not changing anything, anything as far as on the problem. We use this to help us solve some of the problems, but we can also use this to help us um, take the derivative, because right now this right-hand side looks pretty crazy. right? But what I can do is now I can use what we did in our homework for expanding uh, logarithmic equations, I can now expand this right side. So the left side is pretty well set. But I can expand this into x times x squared plus 1 squared minus ln of 2x cubed minus 1 raised to the 1 half. Then, so you guys can see that I separated the division by taking the subtraction. Then what I can do is now I can separate this multiplication using the addition of two logarithms. I'm sorry. So first step. So obviously, if you're trying to do dy dx and you need to take the derivative of this, right? If you're going to take the derivative of this, which you can do, you notice this is a quotient, right? But as far as on the quotient rule, basically in the numerator, you have not only a quotient, but you have the product and chain rule. And in the denominator, in the denominator, you have the chain rule as well. So doing the quotient rule with all those steps would not be very fun. That's what I'm saying. It'd be pretty, uh, pretty yeah, inefficient, but pretty time intensive. It's doing a lot of you know, crazy stuff. So what, I'm so what I was just telling you is what I was trying to give you guys a hint. We didn't go over these problems last class period. But we did do some problems where we could use the properties of logarithms. So what I'm just in injecting, we're going to spend more time going over this. But what I'm just saying is, you can take the logarithm, because what's helpful is I'm not even done yet. But just by noticing, by, use, by taking the ln of both sides, and we're going to, again, we're going to practice more of this. This is kind of more instruction I didn't get to uh, last Friday. But by taking the ln of both sides, now what I can do is I can use the properties of logarithms. Because remember, we did math problems for homework that looked like this, where we just expanded them, right? So by expanding them, now we get an equation that looks like this. Now, is it much easier for me to say d over dx of all of this? It's just a little bit easier to go ahead and take the derivative of this expression than without the logarithm. So we can use the properties of logarithms to help us make the, um, the equation a little bit easier to take the derivative of. Does that make sense? I have a worksheet that we're going to practice on this to simplify. What's your question with the thing? Is it? OK, so I mean, all I'm, all I'm introducing is you can use the properties of logarithms. That's the reason why we spent a day going over properties of logarithms. You can use the properties of logarithms to help you simplify the problem to go ahead and take the derivative. Because now we need to implicitly derive this function. And basically what we're doing is now taking d over dx of ln of y equals d over dx of ln of x plus d over dx of 2 ln of x squared plus 1 
Actually, let's do get the two out of there. So, ready, Emily? So now, as we go ahead and take the derivative, um, what we have over here is going to be 1 over y dy dx. Over here, we're just going to have 1 over x. Plus over here, you can see now we have the chain rule. So this is going to be 1 over x times 2x. I'm sorry, 1 over x squared plus 1. Does everybody follow me with doing this chain rule without doing? I'm just taking the derivative element of x, which is 1 over x, plugging in the inner function, which is x squared plus 1, and then multiplying it by the derivative of the inner function, which is 2x, minus 1 half. Again, I have to do the chain rule again over here. So it's 1 over x, but of my inner function, which is 2x cubed minus 1. So it's going to be 1 over 2x cubed minus 1 times the derivative of my inner function, which will be 6x squared. And now to go ahead and solve for dy dx, I need to multiply by y on both sides. And then I can go ahead and simplify all of this. So I have dy over dx equals 1 over x plus 4x over x squared plus 1 minus, let's see, we have a 2 in the, top, two in the bottom and a 6 up top. So that's going to reduce to negative 3x squared over 2x cubed minus 1. And then we're multiplying it by y. Those y's divide out. We're multiplying it by y, and but we know that y is equal to this, um, to my, our original equation. So therefore, I can just resubstitute in our value of y, which would be x times x squared plus 1 squared over the square root of 2x cubed minus 1. Now, if you want to use 